one. So the subject code is 5001 and the subject name is virology and mycology and currently we are in the unit four. In the unit four we have RNA viruses. So in our among RNA viruses, the first virus is polio virus. So in the unit four we have polio, rhino, influenza. So all RNA viruses are included in the unit four and currently we are discussing about polio virus in detail. So polio means uh, this polio virus will cause uh, uh, demyelination of a uh, neuron. So it will destroy the myelin sheet of the neuron, resulting in formation of inflammation within the spinal cord. Because of this inflammation, the spinal cord will get degenerated. Because of this degeneration of spinal cord, the patient will experience lower limb paralysis. So our polio virus will cause inflammation to the spinal cord, resulting in for uh, resulting in flaccid paralysis or paralysis of lower limbs. In the late stage of the infection, this polio virus can cause uh, destruction to the central nervous system also, resulting in respiratory arrest and eventually death by coma of the patient. So that is the uh, brief pathogenesis of polio virus. So this, this is how the patients infected by polio virus looks like. So they will get lower limb paralysis. Most of the cases, the primary victims will be children. So most of the uh, cases, children will get affected by polio infection and they will get this uh, lower limb paralysis because children will have less immunity. OK, so this is another picture of polio where uh, the patients has been kept in a respiratory ventilators, mechanical ventilators to support their respiration. Since their fenric nerves or respiratory nerves has been paralyzed by polio virus, they have kept under this uh, mechanical ventilator then the notes so no matter whatever virus it is we need to uh, give the we need to satisfy these 10 points we need to discuss about its introduction classification morphology in the morphology you need to discuss about size shape symmetry capsomers genome envelope and special viral special proteins then viral susceptibility resistance how to isolate the virus how what is the pathogenesis of the virus what are the signs and symptoms shown by the virus and its lab diagnosis lab diagnosis including sample collection transport direct microscopy culturing cytopathic effects then uh, inclusion bodies of the virus uh, what type of immunofluorescein test we can detect molecular test antigen detection and uh, specific antibodies present in the patient body so these points we will study in the lab diagnosis then prophylaxis, vaccination of the virus, it can be either active immunization or passive immunization and treatment of the virus. So if we are satisfying these 10 points, then the virus will be completed. Then introduction, we already know that polio virus will cause uh, this uh, inflammation to the spinal cord, especially it will attack uh, the children's resulting in lower limb paralysis. Upon severe infection, the patient may die due to coma and respiratory arrest. Then Classification, polio virus belongs to the family Picornoviridae. In the Picornoviridae, we have five genuses. We have enteroviruses, paraechoviruses, hepatoviruses, apatoviruses, and cardioviruses. So our, our uh, polio virus belongs to the enterovirus. In the enterovirus, we have four subclasses. We have A, B, C, D. So polio virus belongs to the human enterovirus C. Okay, so polio virus is a human enterovirus C to the genus uh, enterovirus to the family Picornoviridae. And also, in the enterovirus D, we have rhinoviruses. Rhinoviruses will cause common cold among the patients. OK, so common cold is caused by rhinoviruses. So this is the classification of poliovirus. Then coming to the uh, susceptible uh, morphology of uh, poliovirus. So the morphology is all you need to remember is stride points. It's a shape. Shape is spherical. Size is 30 nanometers. Genome is single standard RNA. Symmetry is icosahedral. Then it's envelope. It is a non-enveloped virus. Envelope is absent, and there are 60 capsomers in the capsid. Then um, this uh, virus has a four viral specific proteins. So those four proteins are viral protein one, two, three, and four. Are you listening, students? Can you able to see the PowerPoint here? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Fine. Yes, sir. Fine. Mm -hmm. Then. Now uh, we have resistance. So yesterday, Indrajit uh, raised yes. a good question. So how to kill a, a non enveloped viruses? So these non enveloped viruses can be killed by using certain chemicals like formaldehyde. Chlorine can be used for killing uh, these uh, non enveloped viruses. So our uh, polio virus is 
susceptible to chlorides and oxidizing agents and formaldehydes. So with the help of oxidizing agents such as chlorides or formaldehyde, we can use for killing the poliovirus. Whereas poliovirus is resistant to organic solvents because organic solvents will usually lyse the lipids. Hence, the uh, since the poliovirus don't have any lipid membrane, so it will be hard to kill poliovirus via uh, sol uh, organic solvents such as alcohol, chloroform, bile, and proteolytic enzymes. So this poliovirus is resistant to organic solvents, whereas poliovirus is susceptible to the uh, chloride, oxidizing agents, and formaldehyde. So this is about uh, susceptibility and resistance of poliovirus. Then cultivation of poliovirus. So the uh, poliovirus can be cultivated in monkey kidney tissue cultures, or it, it can also be cultivated in the continuous cell lines of Vero, Hela, or Hep2. So Vero or Hela cell lines can be used for cult cultivating the poliovirus. Then the type of cytopathic effect we will observe in poliovirus is cellular disorganization and swelling of cells. So that means hypertrophy of cells can be seen in the poliovirus. So the cytopathic effect shown by the poliovirus will be cellular swelling and cellular degeneration. This will be the cytopathic effect of poliovirus. Then after uh, uh, cultivation, the next point will be the pathogenesis of poliovirus. So today we will discuss about pathogenesis. In the yesterday's class, we finished until cultivation. So today we will discuss about the pathogenesis of poliovirus. So is everyone paying attention, students? Are you listening to me? Is everyone paying attention? Students? Sir? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Fine. So from yes, here, very good. Thank you. So now let us discuss about pathogenesis. By the way, students, see, uh, you just guess how may, what will be the percentage of patients getting lower limb paralysis. For example, if a polio virus attacking me, how much chance is there to get lower limb paralysis in me? 50% chances, 60, 80% chances of getting lower limb paralysis. Actually, if you see the statistics, 90 to 95% patients who got polio virus, they, wo they, they won't get any lower limb paralysis. 95% patients will be asymptomatic in nature. They yeah. won't get any infection. Yes. Yes. Any doubts? So the statistics are really interesting. So 95% patients won't develop any um, infection also. They won't even develop any signs and symptoms of polio virus infection. Okay. Whereas 4 to 8% population will develop my minor illness. They may have uh, this muscle weakness. They may feel some common cold symptoms. Okay. And 1 to 2 percent patients will develop non paralytic poliomyelitis. That means they will have frequent muscle spasms. Okay, 1 to 2 percent patients will develop mild poliomyelitis, non paralytic poliomyelitis. That means they will be recovered. And only 0 0.1 to 2 percent, very, very less actually. That means 1 in 100 people can have a chance of getting paralytic poliomyelitis. But even this 0 0.1 percent is enough it is a big number if you are seeing it as a in a huge population in a population of 1 crore 0.1 percent will be around 10000 so even the number looks small but that is a significant number to get infected by the polio virus so only 0.1 to 2 percent patients will develop the actual lower limb polio myelitis only 0.1 percent people will develop this uh, lower limb paralysis OK, so these are the clinical features of uh, polio virus. So polio virus will cause uh, inapparent infection. Uh, that means a uh, non significant infection in 95 percent patients, whereas eight to uh, four to eight percent patient develop minor flu like symptoms, whereas one to two percent patients will develop non paralytic poliomyelitis and uh, 0 0.1 percent patients can develop paralytic poliomyelitis. And these are the patients that we are seeing on the roads or, or outside. So they are very minor population, but still it is a significant number. Only 0.1% population can develop this lower limb paralysis or paralytic poliomyelitis. Okay, then um, I will go back to the previous slide. Just a second. 
how to go back. Just a second, students. Uh, then pathogenesis of polio virus. So pathogenesis of a polio virus. Now, uh, very simple. First, the virus will enter into the body via uh, via via gastrointestinal tract. So, for, uh, imagine um, a patient who has polio polio infection. He has a defecated open defecation. Then this stool fecal material may landed into food material due to some fly or any animals. Some animals brought this infected uh, polio virus into the food. Then someone ate this uh, polio virus infected food. So when he ate this food, polio virus will enter into the mouth. Then after entering into the mouth, the polio virus will replicate in the mouth and it will go to the nearby lymph nodes. So first route of entry will be oral route. Then polio virus will uh, replicate in the mouth. Then it will go to the oropharynx. Then it will go to the nearby lymphatic organs. Polio virus go to the nearby lymphatic organs. Then within the lymph nodes, it will replicate. Then it will uh, release into the blood causing primary viremia. After primary viremia, the polio virus will go to the target organ. So it will be the central foci. So polio virus will go to uh, bone marrow, liver and uh, the spleen. Then it will once again come back to the blood causing secondary viremia. After secondary viremia, polio virus will go to the target organ, which is spinal cord, spinal cord and brain. After secondary viremia, polio virus will go to the spinal cord and brain and it will cause infection. It will cause poliomyelitis. It will cause spinal cord inflammation in the spinal cord and in the brain. So this is the pathogenesis of polio virus. Now, the incubation period, the, the time it takes for the virus to enter into the body and to show the signs and symptoms in the body, it will take almost 17 to 35 days. That means the incubation period for polio virus is around one month. So it will take almost one month time to show visual signs and symptoms in an infected patient. So this is the incubation period of the polio. Okay, It will take around 17 to 35 days. That is the normal incubation period of the uh, polio virus. And mostly polio virus incubation is seen among children. So children are the highly susceptible uh, population for getting polio virus infection. So this is the pathogenesis of polio. Are you listening students? Is it clear for everyone? Is pathogenesis clear? Now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Clear. Yeah, clear. Very good. Then, uh, uh, by studying pathogenesis, scientists came with a very nice idea. Now, uh, I will give you one, uh, one case study. You just tell me, students. See, mm, I need to develop, I need to give vaccine to the polio, to the community. And I have two types of vaccines. One vaccine is killed polio vaccine. That means I will kill the virus and I will give this killed virus into the body. Okay. So, um, and it will generate antibody productions in the uh, patient. Then second type of vaccine is live polio vaccine. Live attenuated polio vaccine. That means here, um, I'm just removing the teeth of the virus. So virus cannot bite me. Virus cannot cause infection, but still virus is alive. I will give live virus into the body. Live attenuated virus. That is. Uh, live virus. Now, when I'm giving live virus to the body, literally I'm giving a live virus into the body. That means this virus will go to the uh, intestine and this virus will shed in the fecal material of the patient. This virus can able to spread in the community. If my patient going for open defecation, now my vaccine virus will start contaminating the population. Is it good or not? Shall I give live polio vaccine to my patients? Is it a good idea or not? If I'm giving live polio vaccine, this live virus may contaminate the community now because not everyone follows hygiene practices, especially children. They may keep their hands here and there and they will keep in the mouth or they will touch everything. So there is a high chance of getting contamination by live polio vaccine. Is it good? This is a problem. Now, actually what we did is, in a country such as India, 
we have an issue of uh, illiteracy so most of the uh, population most of the people want to go for vaccine centers even after giving awareness to the people to go for vaccine still they won't go for vaccine most of the people won't come for vaccine only 70% population can come but 30% population may not take vaccine in such scenarios if i'm going for killed vaccine killed vaccine can give uh, immunization to only this 70% but if i'm going with the live vaccine what i can do is this 70% will take vaccination the rest to 30% they will get immunization we are uh, 70% population so 70% population will start spreading this good uh, live vaccine live virus into the population so eventually even the non vaccinated people will get infected by this good vac good virus and they will get immunized so always live polio vaccine will have greater benefits compared to the killed polio vaccine the scientist who developed live polio vaccine his name is sabin but there is a problem with live polio vaccine there is a chance of reactivation of virus and there is a chance of getting actual polio infection by a live vaccine that is why people won't take risk of taking live polio vaccine but theoretically live polio vaccine will give 100% immunity to the community even though they are not taking vaccine but still they will get immunized because of cross contamination of live vaccine but the problem with live vaccine is it is somewhat deadlier there is a chance of getting infection by live vaccine so we need a safer vaccine for alternative to live and that uh, alternative vaccine is our killed vaccine so killed vaccine was developed by salx so salx uh, vaccine is very good i will discuss about vaccination of polio um so is pathogens is clear for everyone so polio virus entered into mouth it entered to nearby lymph node then it entered into blood then it entered to liver then it again entered to blood resulting in secondary viremia then it went to the target organ which is spinal cord and brain and it will cause uh, spinal cord and brain problems in the patient this is the pathogens at the same time at the same time virus will also shed in the fecal material of the infected patient virus is already present in the intestinal tract and virus will shed in the fecal material this is the pathogenesis of polio virus okay then oh, just a second then then coming to the lab diagnosis of uh, polio virus so the lab diagnosis is uh, so specimen so specimen can be two types in case of live patients uh, sorry in case of living patients we can take specimens from the mouth or the stool sample can be taken so oropharyngeal washings can be taken or stool sample can be taken from a living patients whereas in a dead patients we can collect csf for biopsy of spinal cord so spinal cord biopsy or csf sample can be taken in case of post mortem patients that means dead patients okay that is the how we can collect the sample then demonstration of virus so virus can be directly demonstrated with the help of electron microscope by stool sample so you take a infected patient stool sample and you can directly demonstrate virus by electron microscopy but electron microscopy is very costly so we cannot go for electron microscopy then isolation of virus isolation or growing culturing this virus what i said this virus can be cultured in monkey kidney cell tissues or this virus can also be cultured in continuous cell lines such as hel or hep2 cell lines can be used for cultivating the virus this is enough within 2 to 3 days you will observe cytopathic effects what type of cytopathic effect you will observe in polio you will observe swelling of cells and new, uh, organ disintegration will be observed in um this polio virus infection okay so this is all about isolation of virus is everything clear so far students are you listening and uh, coming to the new uh, coming to the inclusion bodies of polio virus this polio virus will show cowdery type b acidophilic intranuclear inclusion bodies cowdery type b intranuclear inclusion bodies can be seen in polio virus you you may ask me a question sir polio virus is a rna virus but why polio shown a nuclear inclusion bodies you got the doubt students 
Are you following me? Students? Actually, the polio virus will gain access into the neuron. We are the soma of the uh, we are the head of the neuron. So polio virus will first it enters into the neuron uh, in the head of the neuron where the nucleus is reset. Then it will migrate to the axon. So that is why first we will see distinct lesions within the soma or within the head of the within the nuclear region of the uh, uh, neuron. Hence, it will show nuclear inclusion bodies. What type of inclusion bodies means? Their cowdery type B inclusion bodies can be seen in the polio virus. That is the reason for seeing this uh, intranuclear inclusion bodies, even though it is a RNA virus. Okay, so this is the lab diagnosis. Then, as I said, the uh, rounding of cells can be seen and uh, profile axis. So profile axis of uh, profile axis means vaccination for polio. So polio can be vaccinated by two types of vaccines. We have killed polio vaccine and we have live attenuated polio vaccine. So live attenuated vaccine is called oral polio vaccine, whereas the killed polio vaccine is Salx vaccine. So killed polio vaccine was developed by Salx, whereas live attenuated polio vaccine was developed by Sabin. So there are two types of vaccines available. One is killed polio vaccine and the other one is live attenuated oral polio vaccine. So killed polio vaccine will be given intradermally, whereas live attenuated polio vaccine will be given orally. OK, so these are oral drops. So uh, in, in Indian scenario, live attenuated vaccine will have greater benefits because here our population, uh, it is not possible to vaccinate 100 percent population. So in such a scenario, only live polio vaccine can able to develop immunity in a countries like India. So that is why we opted for live attenuated vaccine, which is oral polio vaccine for uh, immunizing the population. OK, done. The, let us see the advantages and disadvantages of killed and live polio vaccine. So killed vaccine was developed by Salks, whereas live polio vaccine was developed by Sabin. So Sabin vaccine or live vaccine was first developed, then killed vaccine has been developed. OK, now the, the person, the Sabin, got patented for live polio vaccine. So he patented his vaccine. Because of this patent, the vaccine cost became very high. If the, if the vaccine cost is high, it will be challenging to give to a poverty countries or low income countries because low income countries cannot uh, opt for uh, or they won't have such, uh, such money uh, to buy these vaccines. So it will be challenging for them to. <laughs> oh, yes. So uh, yeah, are you listening students? Are you following me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, see if, if the scientist patent his vaccine means we need to pay some money to the scientist to get the vaccine. The, the benefit for the scientist is he will get crores and crores of money because everyone needs this polio virus or polio vaccine, right? But uh, uh, if this is selfishly, then vaccine cannot be given to all population. That is the problem with patents. If something has a value, a good value for globally, then you should give it for freely. If you patent it, it will be a challenging to distribute to the low income countries. But I don't know why, but Sabin got patented his vaccine. And because of these patent issues, this oral polio vaccine become very expensive. And it has many disadvantages. It, it is reactivating and it is causing infections. Then came the good scientist. His name is Salk. So Salk developed the killed polio vaccine. And what he did is it is safe, 100% safe to administer. And he didn't patent his vaccine. He has given this vaccine freely to the globe. Actually, he has given a very nice quotation. Um, we cannot patent the sun. Sun is everyone. Similarly, vaccine is everyone's. If, if something having a good outcome means it should be free. It is a property of everyone. So Salks did a wonderful contribution in the development of this killed polio vaccine. And he was regarded as one of the best humanitarian for giving for non patenting his uh, discovery. So Salks did a wonderful job at uh, giving patent free vaccine to the community. But uh, even though Salks vaccine is safe, but it cannot immunize the whole population 
uh, of India because of this uh, uh, lack of uh, awareness on vaccines to the community. So we have opted for live polio vaccine. Still, live, live polio vaccine has done a miracles. It has been eradicated polio from the India in 2015, I guess. So in 2014 or in 2015, zero case was uh, uh, noted for continuous three years. That indicates India has eradicated polio. So currently, the only 20 cases are there throughout globally of polio. So polio has been completely eradicated. It was stated by World Health Organization. So vaccines played a uh, vital role in the eradication of this uh, deadly virus. So this is all about uh, polio virus. So let us see this vaccination. So first one is Salk's uh, vaccine. So Salk's vaccine is called killed polio vaccine. So the advantage of uh, killed polio vaccine is so killed po it is killed by using formalin. It is given uh, intramuscularly or subcutaneously. It will induce antibodies, but the these are only temporary antibodies. Killed polio vaccine cannot give lifelong immunity. That is the problem. Okay, and uh, the, there is no reinfection of uh, killed polio vaccine. So killed polio vaccine won't uh, uh, it won't cause reinfection, but killed polio vaccine it can prevent paralysis. Okay. But it does not prevent reinfection. Even after taking killed polio vaccine, still there is a chance of getting polio infection. So it does not prevent reinfection. And uh, killed polio vaccine is not good at controlling epidemics. So if entire country was infected by uh, polio means, we cannot control uh, entire country by using killed polio vaccines. So there are um, some problems with killed polio vaccines. But killed polio vaccines are safe at administering. OK, so yeah, and uh, obviously killed polio vaccine is relatively costly effect. It is uh, costly to obtain, even though it is uh, non patented, but still the procedure of getting this killed polio vaccine is costly. OK, so these are the few advantages and disadvantages of killed polio vaccine. And then we have oral polio vaccine. So oral polio vaccine is a live attenuated polio vaccine. It was given orally and it will give both the cell mediated immunity and uh, antibody mediated immunity. It prevents paralysis and also it prevents reinfection. So it is very good at uh, developing immunization in the body. OK, so oral polio vaccine is the best vaccine. So it, it can be effectively used in controlling epidemics and it is very easy to manufacture and it is cheaper. So oral polio vaccine is cheaper and it is easy to manufacture. And uh, we need not to bother about its storage and transport uh, issues. So it can be easily transportable and it is, is easily storageable. So these are the advantages of polio, oral polio vaccine. So these are the two types of uh, vaccines we have. One is a uh, killed polio vaccine and other one is oral polio vaccine. So this is all about the uh, polio. So this is the major differences between killed polio vaccine and the oral polio vaccine. Then how to treat a polio patient? So, so far we discussed, see if you see the table left, First, we discussed about introduction. Then we discussed classification of polio. Then we discussed about morphology of polio. Then we discussed about this susceptibility and resistance. Then we discussed this cultivation, pathogenesis, signs and symptoms, lab diagnosis of polio. Then we are discussing about its uh, prophylaxis. Prophylaxis means vaccination. Then last and final is treatment of polio. Now, how to treat a polio? There is no proper treatment for polio. First of all, listen, you cannot uh, treat someone who has lower limb paralysis, but you can able to manage the, uh, the severity of the problem in the patient. That means uh, the modern medicine is trying to recover the patient uh, health status by giving support to measures such as uh, by, by pre preventing secondary infections in these patients and by uh, by subjecting the patient to rehabilitation centers. That means with the help of uh, uh, physical therapy, that means physiotherapy, with the help of uh, using braces, with the help of using corre corrective shoes, and uh, with some orthopedic surgeries, we are trying to manage the uh, polio, but uh, there is no permanent treat for, treatment for polio virus infection. All we can do is we can uh, minimize the complications within the patient by using certain aids, certain, certain supportive equipment, like using braces, physiotherapy, corrective shoes, or by few orthopedic surgeries, we can um, minimize the complications to an extent, but not 
uh, permanently we cannot treat the polio virus patients so this is all about the polio then so all we can do is we can give physical therapy to the patients okay so we can give this physiotherapy to recover their uh, worsened condition so this is how the polio uh, has uh, done and uh, today polio has been eradicated completely so this is the deadliest uh, history of polio so once upon a time this is the situation of polio but today polio was an ancient disease we have successfully eradicated polio by efficient vaccination vaccination protocols so india has become a very serious about uh, polio vaccination it has done a wonderful job at uh, eradicating polio with vaccines so vaccines will be the uh, the ultimate uh, weapons for any viral infections by giving vaccinations we can eradicate any virus and polio is one example of such a case so yeah these are the pictures of uh, polio virus patients once upon a time uh so Dr. Sals, so he is Dr. Sals. He has uh, developed this uh, killed polio vaccine, which is safer, and uh, he has given this vaccine free to the uh, public. So he haven't patented this vaccine. So he said these words. So polio belongs to every people, I guess. Could you patent the sun? So one of the best quotation by Dr. Sals on developing this uh, killed polio vaccine. And uh, this particular picture really amazes me. So after, after. Uh, 40 to 50 years of struggling with polio. One day, a school teacher was happily telling to her students, she is saying that uh, we developed a vaccine for polio and polio will become an ancient disease hereafter. So everyone can get immunized by polio and we are going to make a history. So this is the scenario in 1955, in April 19. So similar situation happening now also. Currently now we are in the COVID-19 pandemic and uh, we got vaccines. Uh, in the pre in the last time it took 20 years to develop a polio vaccine but currently we have developed vaccine within nine months the tremendous uh, um, achievements has been done in the research of covid 19 to develop these vaccines and they are working perfectly fine so the, the so we have learned many things from the past uh, uh, past uh, stories of these uh, pandemics and epidemics so now we are good at uh, eradicating any viral diseases and COVID is one such example. So it takes only two drops to protect yourself from polio for eternity. So until your death, you can be protected with just two drops of polio vaccine. That much uh, how effective these vaccines are. So this is an oral polio vaccine given to a baby. So e even though the polio was eradicated at now, but still there is a chance of getting polio infection. So everyone must get vaccinated from polio. So it is one of the mandatory vaccine to be given to all children uh, in India or globally. So all it takes is just two drops of oral polio vaccine for uh, giving you lifelong protection from polio. So very good. So, so our, uh, this is the best quotation by Jonas Sals. What he said is our greatest responsibility is to be a good ancestors. So we should be a good ancestors. That will be our greatest responsibility. And he how done it. He is responsible for saving millions of people globally, perhaps billions from these deadly viruses. So both uh, Dr. Sachs and Dr. Sabin contributes equal thing in this uh, polio story. So yeah. So polio was taken a very stringent slogans and uh, we have done a marvelous job at eradicating polio in India by these uh, four grams. So polio vaccine is absolutely safe and everyone can take vaccine. Okay, so old polio day was celebrated on uh, achievements of Dr. Sals. So his birthday has been recognized as a old polio day by old health organization. So every 24th of October, will be celebrated as a old polio day, old polio day. So this is the day where our Dr. Sals has uh, uh, born. So his birthday was uh, regarded as the old polio day. So this is uh, all about polio. So it takes just two drops of uh, oral polio vaccine to give lifelong immunity. OK, so that's it. This is all about polio. 
So I will do a quick revision of polio, then we can finish this lecture, okay? So a quick revision of polio. So polio is a viral disease which is caused by a virus called polio that will cause a poliomyelitis. That means inflammation to the spinal cord. Usually it will affect uh, younger children. Then uh, the classification poliovirus belongs to the Picornoviridae, to the genus Enterovirus, to the class Enterovirus C. Whereas in the Enterovirus D we have rhinoviruses. Then uh, poliovirus morphology. It is a it is a 30, 30 nanometers in size and it is spherical in shape. It is it has a single stranded RNA genome. It, ha it has no envelope and it it's a nuclear capsule is eicosahedralin symmetry. Then the capsomers are 60 and the viral specific proteins are viral protein 1, 2, 3 and 4. Then the polyovirus is resistant to organic solvents such as ether, coloform, bile, whereas poliovirus is susceptible to formaldehyde oxidizing agents and chlorine. Then polyovirus can be cultivated in monkey kidney cell uh, tissue cultures and it can also be cultivated in continuous cell lines such as vero, he line, hep2 cell lines. And uh, polyovirus will show cytopathic effect, which is a nuclear disorientation and uh, enlarging of swelling of cells. Then pathogens is poliovirus enter through mouth. It will go to the nearby oropharynx and it will go to the lymph node, lymphatic organs. It will enter into blood. Then it will go to the central pocket. Again, secondary varimine. Then it will go to the target organ, which is the spinal cord, and it will cause infection in the spinal cord and the brain. Then the clinical features. 90 to 95% patients won't show any sense and symptoms. 88% of patients will develop minor illness. 1 to 2% patients will show non-paralytic poliomyelitis, whereas 0.1 to 2% patients will show paralytic poliomyelitis. The sense and symptoms in the patient, including uh, weakening of uh, lower limb muscles, uh, muscular spasms, uh, lean, uh, the limbs will become very lean because of uh, immobility, and the patient will develop uh, uh, flaccid paralysis in his uh, digits. Digits means his fingers will will close like this tightly because of this continuous paralysis by the virus. So this will be the um, signs and symptoms of poliovirus. Then lab diagnosis in case of living patient poliovirus, uh, the sample can be pharyngeal washings or saliva or stool. Whereas in dead patient, we can take CSF or uh, brain or spinal cord biopsy. Direct demonstration of virus can be done by electromicroscope from the stool sample, whereas virus can be isolated in uh, monkey kidney tissue cultures or uh, HALA cell lines. Then uh, you can able to observe. Uh, so in case of poliovirus, you will see cowdery type B acidophilic intranuclear inclusion bodies. Then prophylaxis poliovirus uh, vaccine can be given by two types of vaccines. One is live polio vaccine and other one is a uh, uh, killed polio vaccine. So live polio vaccine is developed by Sabin, whereas killed polio vaccine is developed by SALS. So if you see the benefits of live and killed, the live polio vaccine has more benefits, but with a disadvantage of having reactivation of the virus that need to be taken care. Then in India, we have given this live polio vaccine and it has given a tremendous output. A good research has been obtained by live polio vaccine implementation in India. And treatment for poliovirus, poliovirus can be uh, treated. The patients who got this polio infection can be treated by um, supportive measures such as physiotherapy with the help of supportive aids such as uh, braces, corrective shoes can be used and uh, even orthopedic surgery can be done for treating the patients. Then this is all about the polio. So it all takes is just two drops to save you from deadly polio virus infection. Thank you very much students. If you have any questions, you can ask. Now, any doubts? Any yes, doubts in today's lecture, students? Yes, Simon. Yes, sir. Due to the yesterday question mm. about the causes expression of the heck of polio, is it through a contract, personal contact, or through air droplets, or through as well intercourse? Uh, I, I. Uh, it is through personal contact only. It is through personal contact. Like uh, if the polio patient, okay, if you share food with polio patient, there is a chance of getting infection to you. Uh, through his oral secretions and his uh, genitourinal secretions. Through 
the patient oral secretion such as his saliva or his uh, his droplets uh, it is not airborne so first of all poliovirus cannot spread through uh, air droplets it cannot spread through uh, this one also it cannot spread through um, air it is not a aerosol but it can be spread through contact so we have contact we may get this uh, poliovirus infection yeah we will get a polio infection via contact Yes, Simon. OK, OK, OK. okay. Yeah, uh, yeah, because this this virus is constantly shedding from the stool, from the fecal material. So wherever this fecal material get contaminated, there is a possibility of a spreading of this virus. So usually this is through contact only. Direct contact of virus will cause infection. That means this virus should enter into the mouth of the patient or the new person. So it can enter through mouth by hands only, by touching contaminated surfaces. So always having good hygiene practices will be better, such as both the infected patient and the healthy individual. First of all, the patient should have a proper hygiene practices. He should not uh, open defecation is the problem. Whenever he's uh, eating or he's going for uh, defecation, he should wash his hands properly. But the problem is 95% patients are uh, asymptomatic. That means 95% uh, people don't know that they have poliovirus infection and they are the one who's spreading in the community. And the target people will be always children. Adults won't get any problem. Adults will be uh, uh, inapparent infectionally. Adults won't have any poliovirus infection. But the children will get uh, lower limb paralysis. So in case of polio, adults are safe, but children are affected. In case of COVID, Children are safe, but adults are affected. It's vice versa for COVID and polio. Yeah. Any more doubts in polio? Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, Simon. I, I like when someone asking questions. Yes, Simon. Sir, sir like, sir, like, if someone affected uh, by polio, mm. and then that person you give him uh, a vaccination, what is mm. the reaction? Uh, see, OK, you, you are saying so, a patient was already infected by polio. Then we have given vaccine to the patient. Can he able to cure? Can yes. we cure? No, yes. that's not possible. Yes, because already uh, see Simon. The answer lies in your question itself. See, imagine myself. Um, imagine I got uh, hepatitis. Uh, yes, imagine uh, just a second students, just a second. Um, yeah, uh, sorry, uh, uh, some students came. Um, so Simon question is, can we treat a patient with vaccine after getting infection? That is not possible because imagine I'm a healthy, healthy person and I got uh, hepatitis infection. See, when I say I got hepatitis, that means hepatitis virus entered into my body. OK, then my body's immune system was surrendered to the virus. That means the virus has successfully bypassed my immune system and it caused infection in me. That means my immune system failed in suppressing the virus. It was literally failed. So that is why the virus dominated and I got hepatitis infection. At this scenario, what is the use of giving vaccine? What is, uh, what is the uh, mechanism of vaccine? Vaccine is just the same viral particle. We are giving the same virus as a vaccine candidate and this viral particle will induce immunity. But my immunity was already weakened because of this virus. So uh, an infected patient cannot respond to the vaccine actually. 
an infected patient cannot respond to uh, live, uh, he, he cannot respond to active vaccination. That means by giving live viruses or killed viruses, we cannot give immunity to those patients. But these patients can be given serotherapy. If there is th their infection is too high, then we can give polio specific antibodies to them. So by that we can prevent uh, some complications, but it won't be a permanent cure. Temporarily, we can reduce the complications in the patients, but we cannot uh, uh, permanently treat the patients by uh, passive immunization or serotherapy. So serotherapy is option where we can give polio specific antibodies to the patient, but it will be temporarily. Those antibodies will work for uh, two to three months. After three months, those antibodies will be degenerated, but they will do temporary uh, treatment to the patient. So yeah. So vaccines cannot work for uh, patients who has infection. That is not possible. Vaccines can be given before the infection, but not after the infection. After getting infection, vaccines can't work because already patient has enough infection where his immune system has been dropped. His immune system surrendered to corresponding virus. Yeah. Is it clear for you, Simon? Yes, sir, it's clear, but just my doubt is like, like there is a vaccine which is. There is a vaccine. Your, your mic muted, uh, Simon. Okay, Simon is trying to ask something. She has a point. Simon lived. He left from the meeting. Okay, I will discuss uh, personally with Simon. Um, any more doubts for other students regarding polio? Or do you understood Simon's question, students? Anyone? What he is trying to ask? I don't know why, but today everyone is so quiet. It's weird. Mm. No. Okay, so thank you very much, students. Your class over. Okay, so thank you very much. You can leave.